Right. We want to uh, talk a little more this session, since we're on the science stuff, it occurred to me that uh, teaching physics <clears throat> and astrophysics and quantum physics along with Christianity makes me Christian science. <laughs> <laughs> Um, we want to talk about um, some comparisons, first of all, <clears throat> or actually some contrasts, and that is the contrast of the quantum world, which is subatomic particles, which is smaller than what you can see with a microscope, no, smaller than what you can see with anything subatomic particles, not atoms, but below atoms, smaller than that. <clears throat> and um, a lot of people think that the microscopic world is just a scaled down version of this world that we're familiar with, and it's not. <clears throat> and uh, seeing smaller things requires really a different kind of light, and I'll just start with that just just to throw a few little things out in relationship to that <clears throat> um, and the bible says jesus said i am the light of the world <clears throat> and that's significant when it comes to seeing things too <clears throat> because um, uh, seeing Small things requires a different kind of light than what we are used to. <clears throat> a normal light, um, red light, uh, they all come in waves. And, and uh, <clears throat> the waves of red light is, is broader. Okay, and I'll explain this in just a second. But some light colors are broader than others the wavelengths are. And <clears throat> because of that, um, they cannot pierce uh, smaller, much smaller, real small things because it's, it would be a little bit like a, a larger wavelength hitting that wall and it can't pierce it, right? I mean, that makes sense. Regular light and, and uh, that sort of thing, when it hits that wall, it stops. Okay, and so uh, uh, because of that, they can't get past the atoms and, and uh, the, the structure, you can call it the matter, but in truth, all of this stuff that is matter can be penetrated, can be pierced, if you will. <clears throat> um, for example, you can see different sorts of heat on the stove, you can see the stove turn up or you can see something getting hot and it gets red hot <clears throat> uh, and then it gets orange and then it gets sort of blue colored. And all of those represent a greater degree of heat. <clears throat> now, we, we can see that, we can see that on metal when it warms up like that but we can't see body heat. We can't see infrared heat signatures off of people. And that's a, that's a whole different way of seeing. And frankly, it takes a whole different kind of light. And so <clears throat> we're saying all that to say to truly see the Lord, you're gonna have to go outside the normal realms and ways of seeing stuff. Just having somebody preach at you or, or teach you is not enough <clears throat> and that's why and, I, and I'll tell you when I was in Bible school when I was in Bible school I did way more studying outside of school than I did in school and I did that because they would teach things but number one how do I know that's true number two even if it is true I don't possess it by them possessing it I possess it by me possessing it. <clears throat> and again, it requires a certain kind of light and a certain kind of light signature. For, for example, 
Let me try to make this simpler. X-rays. We're all familiar with X-rays. Well, that's a perfect example because an X-ray <clears throat> is not stopped by this matter here, is it? It's not stopped by flesh. Why? Because an X-ray's waves are way smaller than, say, red waves that are way broader and that stop. It'd be like an ocean wave trying to to get through a little tiny thing and it would hit it and maybe a little bit would go, but it, it really wouldn't do it. Well, an X-ray sees right past the flesh, which is not as dense as bone. In other words, okay, what do I mean by as dense? It's not as stupid. No, it's not as, <laughs> it doesn't have as many atoms that are tightly packed together. Something that is has a lot of atoms packed tightly together is considered dense. And, and the more that it is packed together, the more dense it is. And I made this statement, I don't know, I don't, I don't remember when, but I made a statement that if we held some material from a black hole and we dropped it, it would literally go straight through the earth. And I remember the first time I ever heard that, I went, huh, why would that, you know, it didn't make any sense to me why that would happen until I realized that it, it, it would be like an x-ray shooting right through flesh. It, the molecules are not as, packly, as, as tightly packed together as the dense material from a black hole that would just, it, it's like, um, it would be like getting through something even less than a screen. You see what I'm saying? And, uh, and I, I drew this before, but I mean, if you got, if you got atoms, I mean, this could literally be, and I don't know why this doesn't work properly, but this could literally be a certain material. These are the atoms, but what, what kind of particles would these be if they're actually making matter, if they're actually forming something? What kind of subatomic particles would these be? Yeah, fermions. Why? Because number one, we know that fermions are what form all matter. Number two, you see this, this separation? They are actually holding together because there's another one over here and they are pushing against one another. And this material right here may not appear too dense to us. In fact, we would say that's porous except when you put it down on a subatomic microscopic level, it could be iron. It could be iron. But something, um, uranium, how about uranium? Denser than iron, denser than all that. But the stuff that comes from a black hole or a, <clears throat> a supernova after it's, it's turned into a, a what, red dwarf, It'll, this is just like, it's like pulling back a curtain, shooting through there. Okay. Why am I saying all that? Because to see the Lord, to come to a revelation of the Son in you, to, to truly see him, you're going to have to go past the natural faculties that God gave you. You're going to have to rely on powers, the Holy Spirit, powers that are greater than the natural world, greater than all that's, um, um, here we go, greater than all that is common to you and common to me. And if you'll put yourself in that mindset uh, and then keep yourself there, because the scriptures say we know nothing yet as we ought. Well, we, that, you know, that doesn't, you know, it can tell us that, but it means nothing. It's like somebody talking into the air because if we see something, anything, one thing from the Lord, we think we know a whole lot. And we start thinking, oh man, I really know the Lord now. I remember when I was in Bible college and I was, I'd see something in the word. I'd go, oh, praise God, I had a revelation of Christ. And I'd turn around and do something that was the exact opposite of Christ opposite of his nature, opposite of him, and I'd go, and I remember I'd get real discouraged, but then I made this assumption. I said, you know what? To see Jesus in the way that the Father wants me to see Jesus, 
is apparently not this seeing that I have just seen him. Maybe it's red, maybe it's orange, maybe it's blue, maybe it's, but it's not x-ray yet. It doesn't get, and, and here we go, here, so here's the phrase, it doesn't get past the flesh. Because guess what? You're going to have to see past the flesh. You're going to have to see past all of the things that <clears throat> either make sense or don't make sense, depending on how you look at it, because flesh cannot make sense, too. <clears throat> um, and so, um, you, you know, this is the purpose for even considering quantum physics or the subatomic world to help us realize that, um, and last class I think it was, we made this statement, so I'll, I'll finish that in just a second. We made this statement that the sun, that the sun is nothing more than billions and trillions of subatomic little suns, little photons, little particles. Just that's what it is. And, and being densely packed together, remember we said you densely pack them together and you can form a laser. You, you keep densely packing them together and you can form a sun. Okay. Well, folks, the true sun that God wants, the fullness of the sun that God wants is not just Christ in you. And in fact, the true translation of Colossians 1.27 is, get ready, I know you've never heard it like this, but it's the true translation, Christ in y'all, the hope of glory. <laughs> Meaning, that, let's text him for saying, Christ in us. Christ in more than one. In other words, we are the body of Christ. Now, I realize that there's not too many places that people put a true emphasis on the body of Christ. When they say the body of Christ, they're talking about all the people that gather together that are Christians. Consider the difference between that, a bunch of people gathering together that are Christians, and a bunch of members that exist to manifest Jesus, his life. So I said, all those little photons, because Jesus said, I'm the light of the world, and then he turned around and said, you are the light of the world. Do you remember that? Jesus said that. And I, I mean, I remember, if I was standing there, I mean, if I was one of the 12, and I was following Jesus, and Jesus turns and he goes, I am the light of the world, I'd have gone, oh, yeah. Yes, you are, Jesus. Oh, glory. And then later, when he's getting ready to go, when he turned and said to us, disciples, you are the light of the world, I'd have gone, Pfft. <laughs> us? Have you been paying attention to these guys? You know? But he didn't mean you and your individual identity. He didn't mean you as you. He didn't mean you with superpowers. You know, a superhero for Jesus. He didn't mean that. He meant you are me now in resurrection, that you, but you are only a member of me. You are a photon, but if you photons all come together in me as one, we make a son. We make the son. We make the son of God. And we express, and when, when you know, most people, when they look at the sun and the light that comes from the sun, they don't go, oh, thank God. For a zillion photons, basking in the photon. No, no, no. They say, thank God for the sun. Okay. As a, as, as a gathered bunch of believers, we want to be more than just believers with our own identity and our own thing. We want Christ to be seen in something even greater than ourselves. And the only way that's going to happen is, is that we have to strive or seek, because strive is not a good word, but we have to seek for 
with our whole heart for the greater good. In other words, our sharing, our, our uh, encouragement, everything, not everything, but, but much of it has the uh, exhortation that we're all in this together as his body, that it is not enough for us to just, you know, a person could say, well, I got Jesus. I mean, I've seen Jesus. I'm stable. God is good. You people are messed up. Good luck. Well, that you know what that tells me? You haven't seen Jesus yet. I mean, just that spirit tells me that. But to see Jesus is to want to, I'm going to say this, and this is not the best way to say it. To see Jesus is to want to be Jesus. And here's what I mean. Not that I'm Jesus or you're Jesus. But to want Jesus to be able to be in his body. And to go beyond just the fact that, well, I'm getting Jesus. Good luck with you know, your walk. It is not that way. You know, if one falls, we all fall. If one weeps, we all weep. If one rejoices, we all rejoice because of the, of the reality of our goal is not just an individual revelation of Christ for Bible school students. Our goal is to be formed as his body that he can be seen greater and he will be seen greater the more members are expressing him. Can I get an amen on that one? <clears throat> All right. So we've got, to, we've got to go deeper. And so that's really the, the, the contrast that I'm wanting to share. Um, and um, I, I, I want to contrast the known world, the seen world, the astral world, all that can be seen and comprehended with our eyes with this kind of light. And I want to contrast, and that's called, in, in, phys, in, in Christianity, that's called walking by sight. Amen? That's called walking by sight. In physics, it's called classical physics. <laughs> it's your regular physics that studies, um, that, that studies the planets and studies uh, the earth, how many times it spins and how many times it goes around the sun. And all is ordered, all is predictable, all you can predict the outcome. In fact, you can, it, it is, the, this world that we can see is so ordered that you can set your watch by it up to the second. And another, another word for that in physics is Newtonian physics, and that's Newton. And his, his discoveries. And they were all ordered and perfect and right. And everything was, was uh, just so clear. Um, and I was looking at a scripture here because I want to do some contrasting here. So I, wanted, I want you to look at a few scriptures. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 14, the last verse there. And this is talking about the body getting together in church services and how things should happen and what have you. <clears throat> what page? 1247. <laughs> okay, 1 Corinthians 14, last verse. Let all things be done decently and in order. All right. And that, let, let me say, I think I've got another scripture. Hebrews uh, chapter 8. Hebrews 8. And verse 5. Now let's start at verse 4. Now verse 4, For if he were on earth, he should not be a priest, seeing that there are priests that offer gifts according to the law, who serve unto the example and shadow of heavenly things, as Moses was admonished of God when he was about to make the tabernacle, for, and this is what God said to him, for see, saith he, that thou make all things according to the pattern shown to thee in the mount. Okay. These things are 
pictures of what you can see with your eyes. You can see the, the church service. You can see individuals and how they function. And within, in the realm of that, and, the, and this is contrasted to the church services in 1 Corinthians 14 and to the tabernacle, which we are his tabernacle. And he said, make everything according to the pattern. <clears throat> All right. So in classical physics or Newtonian physics or religion based primarily on what you see and how you do things, you following me? <laughs> All is supposed to be very ordered. Okay. But as I said, the quantum world is not just a miniaturized version of this world. In quantum physics, things seem unpredictable. They are, they are disordered and random to most physicists. Okay, Not everything, but, but much of it really is very disordered in everything. And uh, it, you can be working with subatomic particles, and this is actual fact, you can, you can have everything in place, you know, your little experiment with everything a certain way, and you can do your experiment, and when, and you do it to get a certain result, and so you get a result, and then with everything exactly the way it was, you do it again and get another result in quantum physics. You get a completely different result. And the, the, the electron or part, subatomic particle, whereas in, when you did it this time, it was there. But when you do it this time, it ends up over here. And it's, uh, you know, very confusing. And in fact, when uh, quantum physics was first suggested, and brought up, uh, they told uh, Albert Einstein, who was the greatest physicist at that time, he'd come up with more stuff that was true and right on, and they told him about it, and he disagreed with it. Do you know what on ba what basis? He said, here was his answer why he didn't believe it could be all random and everything. He says, God is not disordered. God is not random. All right. Now, just so you know, as he got down the road, he changed his mind about quantum physics. And in fact, came up with some of the really good, neat things that, that were proven by it. But he had, I'll just say, he had a classical view of physics going in. And many times, we have a classical view of Christianity going in. And I don't care how smart you are, <laughs> if you can't adjust, you're going to miss something. Yes? The, the big change in Albert Einstein's theory is, is at first, he believed that the entire universe was static. Right. That's exactly and they, right. And when they could prove to him that it was not static, then that's when... He, his theory really advanced. Right. And, you know, that space, that time space is one and the same thing, which when I first heard that, I just went, how can that be? Okay, well, here we go. It, that's quantum physics. <laughs> that's because if you've been in classical physics, then you have to say, how can that be? And that you can bend space, and that he proved that you could bend space with an eclipse and a certain thing that he did. And some of you know know that experiment, but but he proved that that space time bends and actually sets itself into certain ruts after a certain period of time. And no longer is it gravity that's just doing things, but the molding of space time. <clears throat> all right. Well, that all sounds weird to the average person. Many, many, many concepts that people didn't used to believe in, there have been proofs of many of these things. Not all of them have been proven out yet, but many, many of them. <clears throat> all right. So in, uh, Paul says, in the church where you can see everything, 
let everything be done decently and in order. Uh, the writer of Hebrews tells us that when Moses heard from God, he said, now see, and if to see requires a certain kind of light. So what kind of light was he talking about? He said, see that you make all things according to what? A pattern, a God-given pattern, an order, a decently. <laughs> Are you following me? All right. But what, may I suggest that if there is classical physics and quantum physics, which is a whole nother realm and a whole nother light needed and a whole nother way of seeing things, that that is only a shadow of the true and we've already established that all things were made by him and for him and to him and that all by him all things consist and therefore it would tell us that there might, might be a whole nother level of viewing things that is going to require an adjustment on our part. Yeah. That when he gives him the pattern for the tabernacle and, and they make the tabernacle, it seems to me the farther you get in, it's the reverse of how man actually sees it. It gets darker and darker, and the light ultimately ends up not being man's light at all right. by which he sees. That's, that's a good example. The opposite of how we would build it. I mean, we would build it to be greater and greater light as you get further in, <laughs> right. and yet he dims the light that we see by in order for us to see. <laughs> Well, and it's interesting, when God gave the pattern, he started from the outside in. But he is from the inside out. He works from the inside out. But that's, that shows you that there's two different orders. And, you know, the scriptures say God's ways are not our ways, and his thoughts are not our thoughts. Carolyn? chance we do it. I mean, you know, again, my purpose is not to teach physics. My purpose is to awaken us to some things that might help us. Yes. I just one of the quick question, it might back us up just a little bit, but you said something about the classic view that we have of Christianity. Is that related to or the same as the traditions that we make? Um, not necessarily the traditions. It, um, it could literally be the teachings that we're familiar with. Therefore, that's anybody, because every Christian is familiar with certain teachings. And uh, it's just like what Carolyn was trying to describe. We unintentionally end up in a box, and we limit how far we go with the Lord. And I'm saying, I'm not talking to Baptist or Methodist or whatever. I'm talking to us. I'm talking... I, I'm saying of myself, I know I've done that never intentionally, but I have done that. I'm saying that even in teaching this, it is the proof that God is, has been working on me to kick out the walls again. And those that have been around a long time know that I'm real good at kicking out the walls every so often. I just, you know, it's like, okay, we've been here a while now. <laughs> I'm going to start, you know, because I want, I want Jesus and I want you know, it's not, can I say it like this? I don't just want Jesus. I want fresh Jesus. I want living Jesus. Uh, and I want reality to move me. And teaching after a while does not move you. But reality will move you. Life will move you. So <clears throat> that's where we're at. Okay, let's look at a couple other scriptures now, seeing the other side. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Second Corinthians, and this is going to be in contrast to the two scriptures we just had, decently in order, and see that you make everything according to the pattern, okay? <clears throat> in other words, we're moving now by coming to these scriptures from classical physics to, <laughs> to quantum physics, if you will. <clears throat> All right. And this is uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, and we'll just read verse 1 through 4. 
It is not expedient for me, doubtless, to glory. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. All right, if you just stopped right there, if you just stopped right there, you, you know what you would say? I will too. <laughs> right? Okay, but he's fixing to jump off into the quantum world here, if you will. I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago, whether in the body I cannot tell, or whether out of the body I cannot tell. God knoweth. In other words, he's sort of in spooky land, if you will. Are you following me? All right. God knoweth. Such an one caught up to the third heaven. Well, I'll be died gum. I didn't even know there's a third heaven. I'm, I didn't know there's a second one. <laughs> you know, I hadn't even got to the first one. You know what I'm saying. <clears throat> All right. Um, to the third heaven, verse 3. And I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell. God knoweth. Okay. He's stuttering now. I mean, he's starting to repeat himself. That is an exact repeat. How he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words, which is not lawful for a man to utter. Okay, I'm just completely out of my element here. Okay? When, you know, it's like this does not fit into my classical understanding of Christianity. This seems weird. This doesn't really make sense. He started with, I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord, and I come to visions and revelations of the Lord regularly in the Word of God. Not in the third heaven. Or whatever. All right, let's look at one more scripture real quick so we can, in the mouth of two or three witnesses, this over in Romans chapter 12. <clears throat> And uh, verse 3, Romans 12, starting with verse 3. For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we being many are one body in Christ and everyone members one of another. All right. Do you know what that's saying? Do you get it? Do you get it? This, you know, I think we've made this say everything except for, well, what it's saying. And that is, he says, you know, uh, I through the grace of God that's given unto me I say to every man that is among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. So, so we go like this. Okay. Yes, humble, humble, humble. Abhi gabi no skoda magoda. You know, we get real humble and oh yes, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm not going to think of myself more highly than I ought, even though I'm greater. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to come down a little lower and whatever. Okay. That's not even talking about that idea. That's talking about thinking as an individual as opposed to the body. Read it again with that thought, and that's exactly what he's saying. Don't, he's saying, for we're all members of the one body and members one of another, and it's the body of Christ. And how can a member think himself more highly than other members when it's only Christ's life in us? Now, come on. I mean, would you, just, let's just be honest. Would you rather preach in front of 5,000 people or would you rather clean the toilets? Yeah. Well, having preached in front of 5,000 people before, it's a little like cleaning toilets. But that's another, that's another thing altogether. Here's, here's the thought. And that is, and, and the question, if when cleaning those toilets, are you allowing it to be Christ or are you doing it? And thinking, well, nobody else would do this job. They're too busy preaching to 5,000 people. I'm better than they are. Do you know you can actually be prideful over cleaning the toilet? It's amazing what 
flesh can do and pride. It'll find a way. I will find a way. They can be mean to me, but I will rise above it and clean these toilets. Okay, that's not the Lord. And you can preach to 5,000 people and it not be the Lord. You can walk away thinking you're something. You know, I just preached to all these people. So, so? What, did you give them Christ? Was it Christ? Were you you? And if it was you, you're probably going to end up thinking more highly of yourself than you ought. And if, you, if it was you cleaning that toilet, you are probably going to end up thinking more highly of yourself than you ought. So how highly should we think of ourselves? That it's Christ. That whatever our hand finds to do, that it, we do it heartily as under the Lord and by the Lord through his spirit, through his nature, so that we are the body of Christ. That's, that's what it's saying. So that we are the body and members one of another. Yes? It's like we see the toilet or the crowd, but we don't see the Lord. Which makes them both exactly the same. Right. Well, and it, so it doesn't matter what you do. And that's, 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 that's the thought. Um, you know, this is not the exact example, but the Lord gave me this example one time ago. Uh, I used the example that I have several coffee cups at my house that I like. And they're, I like pottery. I like nice, you know, cool looking pottery. I like old looking you know, beat up looking stuff too. And, and so, but I have different ones, you know, and some of it has a nice glaze with nice blending of colors and some of it has, uh, you know, it's just rough and everything. And, you know, I can go get me some coffee and with that coffee, you know, I can drink out of this particular cup. And then the next day, you know, Deb may wash, wash the things, put everything back up there and then grab another thing, but maybe three days in a row she grabs the same cup, puts my coffee in it or something. Well, what is this other nice glazed cup thinking? I was more expensive than that. You've used him three times this week and so far. You only used me once. You know, well, you know, if I could hear my coffee cups arguing, I would say to them, you're all my cups. <laughs> you're all my vessels. You're all my vessels. And when I get ready to use you, then I will use you. But if I don't want to use you, then I won't use you. But you're still my vessel. And you're not doing, you're not not doing anything. You're waiting. You know, I've often said that, you know. I remember in the early going of this church, I would say, you know, we just need to wait on the Lord. We, you know, and we'd literally stop service and we'd just be praying stuff and people go, well, are we going to do something? I said, we are doing something. We're waiting. That is doing something. That's not not doing anything. That is doing something. And... They didn't get it because our uh, worth, our value is wrapped up in what we do instead of just being his vessel and saying, look, Lord, whenever you want to use me as your coffee cup, I'm here. I know you know I'm here. You're fixing to shut the door on me. It's going to be dark in here. I'm going to be in here many days probably. You know what? I love you. And when you want me, I'm ready. You know. And, you know, people always talk about able, their ability. Ability. I'm able. But what about available? And available may mean not doing anything until he reaches for you. Can I get an old me on that one? <laughs> that, and that that actually brings him more glory than if you jumped up and did something. 
you know, if you could jump down and get over by the coffee pot and pour coffee in you and be sitting there when, you know, when, you know, I come walking up and go, I don't know, I was just thinking this cup right here, you know. And, sure. Well, it, was, it was cold from the beginning. <laughs> Cold-blooded. <clears throat> no, no, the goal, folks, is that it be Christ in us. The goal is that we not just do stuff. The goal is we want the Father to be pleased with the Son. And this is, this is uh, still along our lines of these different contrasts and stuff. Um, and then, so we're talking about quantum physics and therefore knowing the Lord. Remember some of the scriptures that we just read. Knowing the Lord outside of what you can see. I knew a man 14 years ago who was whatever. <clears throat> but it, but not, I'm not talking about miracles or whatever. I'm talking about knowing the Lord. I, I'll say it like this on a subatomic level. Knowing him deeper than what get, getting past flesh into things that are more dense, more strong in him. Um, but I, I told this story not too long ago, but it was, uh, I'll make a shorter version of it, but I, I'll just show you how the Lord blew my mind. One time we had an altar call when we were over on Bolivar, and uh, we, had a bunch, we had five people come down, and they, my Lord, they all had impossible prayer requests, you know. And uh, one of them was a, 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 well, one of them was, uh, Mike Gentry's got a brother, his name is Jim, Jim's wife, so it's his sister-in-law, Mike Gentry's sister-in-law, okay? She came forward, you know, and, and they're all telling me impossible things, I'm going, oh God, I can't, you know, I just didn't, I didn't have faith for any of it, you know? I didn't. And it, the more, each one I talked to, and I didn't pray for them, I just was trying to get what the deal was, and by the end of it, I was ready to just, you know, quit the ministry. But uh, Mike's, Mike Gentry's sister-in-law said, I can't afford to go to the dentist and I have an abscessed tooth back here and it's killing me. And I, I can't go and da 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 And would you just pray that God will heal it? So, you know, I went right down the line. Oh, Lord. You know, actually what the Lord told me, it says, you know, faith, hope, and love. The greatest of these is love. You can at least love these people. And so I did that. But I went down the row, and when I got through, uh, stuff started to happen. I can't remember some of the others, but they, but they, somebody sitting there, and they went, oh, my God, you know, the Lord did this for me. The Lord healed that and whatever. And, and uh, my sister-in-law went in the bathroom, come running out screaming, and said, the Lord just filled my tooth. The abscess is gone. He filled my tooth with gold. And I'm going, I don't know about all that, you know. <laughs> you know. I was raised United Methodist. Okay, you don't get any more unbeliever. <laughs> and uh, I'm just going, you know. I said, can I, can I see it? She said, sure, you know. She showed me, and there's this big chunk of gold in there, and it's not all polished like you've been to a dentist. You know, <laughs> that was the thing that got me. Was And you could tell it was gold, but it wasn't all polished gold. But you could tell. And you could tell that somebody set that in there <laughs> and just did it. And I'm going, I don't even know what to think about this. I just, you know, I, and I'd seen miracles growing up. I mean, a lot of miracles. But I didn't necessarily believe that God was in the dentistry business, you know. <clears throat> anyway. So I said, I, I want you to do me a favor, Karen. Would you? And she's, she's, she was very close, and our families were close. I said, I, I want you to go to the dentist and ask the dentist what he thinks and tell him what happened. She said, okay. She went to the dentist, and she came back, and she said, he said it's real gold. <laughs> and he said, clearly, no dentist would do it this way. And... Uh, I was hoping that he'd have said something to, 
you know, other than that, you know. All right. That was one of the many, many things along the way that the Lord has had to say to me, get ready. The Lord has had to say to me, you don't know everything that's going on. You don't see everything. You don't have a handle on everything. You may have a handle on the outward seen world that you can control, but the quantum world is mine. <laughs> and you've got some seeing left to do. Well, that, that humbled me. And it wasn't just the miracles. It was mixed in with that. The Lord was dealing with my heart about knowing him beyond what I knew him then. He's never stopped with that dealing. He is still dealing with me today about it, up on it and still showing me himself in just wonderful, wonderful ways. But anyway, um, <clears throat> but, but when we hear from God, when we get something from God, oh, look out. I got it from God. I know this is the Lord. Do you understand what I'm saying? We immediately go to that place. We go to this place. Fit in line with. What is our reaction? We usually don't accept. Views of others. All right. Well. I got two words to say. Stop it. You know, you, me, all of us. We, this is a very hard place. This is a very controlled place. This is a very classical physics place. And you'll never see beyond the scene as long as we hold that. And, and, uh, and not only that, but it divides the body of Christ. Yes. Right. See it too, and they were all caught up in this physical matter, so they couldn't see the real Jerusalem. Amen. All right. So let me give you, give you some things that might help you. Number one. We don't know everything. Now, now, you would think that if you came to a place like this, that people had been living this and searching the scriptures day in and day out for 20 what years? 20 some odd years, 28? 28 years, that we would finally know everything. But we don't know everything. Yes? That's right. And it really seems to be that way, you know. I always tell people about the sign I used to have on my desk that says, when I was 16, I knew everything. You know, now I don't know anything, you know. But um, we, we don't know, and not just us here, but certainly us here. Because we have hearts that are still hungry to know the Lord. And we never will give up those hearts for anything. I don't care how much we have seen from God. Are you following me there with this? I don't care how much you've seen from God. That you'll never give up a heart that says, I don't know it all. Lord, show me, help me, teach me. Or, you know, guide me. Yeah. <clears throat> the second thing is, that whatever, whatever you've seen, even that that you've seen can be seen from many other angles. Some of you have been around a long time. I have heard this story also that I use, but I, I love it. And I remember, from, I remember from high school, I think, or junior high, in one of the books that we read, but it was the story of the, the uh, <clears throat> five blind men and the elephant. And it was in one of our school books, you know. And... And they were five blind men from India. And so they said, uh, 
the man introduced him, you know, and said, now here is an elephant, and I want you to tell me what the elephant is like. And so one of them walked up to the elephant and grabbed his tail and was feeling it, and he says, the elephant is like a rope. And another one went over to his ear and said, the elephant is like a palm branch. And another one grabbed his leg and says, the elephant is like a tree, and on and on and on. They all had part. They all had an angle. They all had a piece. And they were all right, but they were all wrong. Do you get it? They were really all wrong. Because guess what? The elephant's not like any of those. He's like all of those put together, and then you have the elephant, okay? And so, but, but okay, now we can hear that story forever. And I know Bible school students that graduated from this place and have heard that story probably at least twice while they were going to school and have seen them get in situations where somebody was talking about something that they knew from a different angle and they got huffy about it, not remembering that the elephant may also be like so-and-so or whatever. You, you understand what I'm saying? And that's because when we see something from the Lord, you know, you can say, look, I know the elephant is like a rope. Don't try to tell me different. I know. I know that. I, I have literally handled the Lord in this way. You know, and if you, you know, you came to a person who really knew an elephant and you're telling him he's like a rope, he's going to go, are you an idiot? And he'll go, I'm not an idiot. You're the idiot. I'm telling you. You following me? That's, that's the deal. That's the deal. Things can be seen from many angles. And I'm telling you all this because there is no need for this fellowship, this Bible school, or any individual to get set in his ways where we can't listen to somebody else. God uses other people. He will intentionally bring somebody that he knows that you are prejudiced against. And I, I'll tell you another story, but I don't, you know, I won't. But he, he uses, I know this, he will send somebody to speak to you about what he wants to say that you would think was foolish or something, you know. And I had it happen to me, and I sort of was going through it, and then all of a sudden I went, you know what? I need to listen. This could be from God. I need to get past the surface here. I need to see down to the bone, not just the flesh. Okay, all right, so I can tell you this, you can hear the stories, you'll do whatever you're going to do, unless something in your heart says, I would like to grow, you know, straight and tall, I would like to be balanced, I would like to not just be narrow in everything. And you say, and here's the only way to get that way. You don't think by sitting in this class you've got anything, anything. But you take these things, and, you, and I'm not even finished yet, but they're telling me time's running out, so we'll have to do this the next class. But we, you know, you think you've got it because you heard it, and you don't have it. The only way you're going to get it is if you'll get on your knees or in your heart, you say, Father mm -hmm. And I remember in Bible school praying all the time during class because I knew I would forget what to pray about when, at the end. Yeah, and so I would, I'd hear something, I'd go, oh, Lord, you've got to help me with that. And I know he's fixing to cover a whole new thing here, but I'm just asking you to touch me right now and start moving in that, that way. And I really care, and I don't want to forget, so I'm saying it right now. Okay, what else? You know. And I did that all the time. I did it all the time. Pray. Ask the Lord. Ask your Father to make you grow straight and tall and not bent bending in a certain direction not having a leaning in a certain way and that Christ uh, you know the Bible says a false balance is an abomination to God you ever heard that one well what does that mean well that means that God wants you to 
if you owe 10 shekels, you need to, pay, you need to weigh out 10 shekels. No. That means that if you're out of balance with certain things, God's not pleased with it. Don't think he is. Don't think you're okay. Don't just go on like everything's wonderful. Say, Father, balance me up. Bring me into the balance that is Christ. And by the way, you don't balance Jesus or the cross into this. Christ and him crucified is the fulcrum upon which the balance beam rests. You say, what's a fulcrum? Look it up. That's what my mama used to always tell me. <laughs> Look it up. She kept a dictionary and some other books, and she'd never tell me anything. She'd say something, and she'd go, go look it up. There's a book right there. I guess that's why I look it up in the Bible nowadays. All right. Um, I still have some more along this list, but we're going to have to stop right now. So we'll come back, and guess we'll be doing this science thing next class, too.